folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. And in this tutorial, I'd like to show you Null Light Factory Easy from Red Giant Universe. I'll be showing you Null Light Factory Easy in three different host apps. I'll be starting right here in After Effects. To apply in After Effects, I'll go to my Effects and Presets, Universe Stylize, Null Light Factory Easy. Up at the top, we have four different preset categories. And each of those categories has a number of presets, and these are the same presets that you'll find in Null Light Factory 3. If you'd like to preview these presets, you can go down to the bottom and select Show Lens Library. This might help to zoom in a little bit. You'll notice that the category name is over here on the right, and this library will change depending on the category that you have selected. So if I want to select this preset right here, double barrel, this is an action in sci-fi. So I'll go to my action and sci-fi presets and select double barrel. Uncheck show lens library. And then we've got the preset rendering in our comp. Flare brightness is pretty straightforward. It's the overall brightness of the flare and the flare scale scales each individual component of the flare. The light location is a simple X, Y position. We have a color control that will tint the lens flare. The angle control controls some, but not all of the lens flare elements. These are mostly fan and spike type elements that as you change the angle, that will have sort of an evolving shimmering kind of effect on the lens flare. The next section, location tracking, has a number of different options. Let me jump to a different comp here. The location layer is pretty simple, it allows us to define an external layer, use the alpha channel of that layer to define the XY location of the light. This will average together the largest single spot in your image. So it will be helpful to use something very small and obvious to define where that position is. The next one, Obscuration Layer, allows us to control the color and brightness of the flare based on the information of another layer. That can even be the same layer. We just need to define what that layer is. So in Obscuration, I can set the Obscuration Layer to be the same clip that I'm applying the effect to. And under Obscuration Type, instead of using RGB, which will take the color of the source image, and as you can see, it's pulling the greens and yellows from the leaves. I'll have it use the luminance. So in those dark areas, we'll start to block out the flare. And this will give us an effect of the light flickering through the leaves. If you've applied a lens flare to a solid, you'll want to check the render alpha box so that you will render a transparency behind the lens flare. This can be useful if you're working with logos. In this case, I am putting the lens flare layer on top. I might want to set this to a blending mode like screen. In my obscuration layer, I've set this obscuration to be another layer, which is this text, and my text has different colors. I'm pulling the RGB obscuration. So as I move this between the blue and orange areas, my flare will change color. If I set this to alpha, this will simply use the alpha channel and the lens flare will disappear as it moves behind the text. This is all doable in other host apps like Adobe Premiere. So I'll go to my effects, universe stylize, apply null light factory. I'll go to the natural light category and select a preset called six point star. I'll move this up here, tint it a little bit orange. Now in my location tracking, I can define my obscuration layer. Let me close out my effects. In Premiere, I define my obscuration layer by defining the video track. In this case, I'm working with video one, which is where my clip is. And I'll set this to Luma. Lens flares can be useful transition elements. And I'd like to show you an example of this in Final Cut Pro. I'll go to my generators and drop a solid just above the cut point of these two clips. I'll trim this up and go to effects, universe, stylize, null light factory. 
Now, to render that alpha channel, I'll go to Render Alpha, and I'll keyframe this so that the flare is the brightest at the cut point. So I'll go to Flare Brightness, set a keyframe for that, and turn it up. Now, this might not be the best choice for this. Before we start making decisions on the look of the lens flare, I would say, in this case, go down to your compositing section and select a different blending mode, like screen. That's going to look a lot better. Still, I'll pick a different one. Let's say we'll use one from motion graphics, like the one called Garnet. Let's bring this flare brightness down just to the point where we can see that our video cut is going to be covered up. And at the end of my clip, I'll just keyframe the flare brightness down to zero, as well as at the beginning. And now we have a quick lens flare transition between two clips. So that is Null Light Factory Easy from Red Giant Universe. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>